Thank you for joining us on Focus Nigeria Interviews. My name is Noye Odiri. Our guest on the show today is a political activist. He's a former member of the Nigerian House of Representatives, and he's the Executive Secretary of the Anti-Corruption Network. It's with great pleasure that I welcome Honorable Dino Melaye to the show. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, the pleasure is mine. It's very nice to have you. Now, this year you've been a thorn in the flesh of a lot of um, government public holders, you know, parastatus and all of that. But before we go into that, let me just ask you, the Anti-Corruption Network, what is this about? What is its aim? What does it want to achieve here in Nigeria? Yeah, um, the Anti-Corruption Network is a non-governmental organization. It's a pro-democracy organization. It's non-religious, non-political, and um, a non-profit making organization. Actually, I caught the vision of establishing the Anti-Corruption Network after um, uh, being a member of the House of Representatives because I saw the magnitude and intensity of corruption in um, the system is endemic. Uh, corruption is the bane of our development as a nation and um, as a country we lose about 60% of our budget to corruption and wastage. So I haven't been a member of the House of Representatives and I haven't moved uh, the highest number of motions, anti-corruption motions in the history of the National Assembly. I've come to hypothesize situations to find that, that there's a serious need to ameliorate and palliate the problem of um, corruption in Nigeria. And the only way to do that is to establish non-governmental organizations that will try to become whistleblowers, that will try to indoctrinate and imbibe Nigerians with positive rudiments um, in terms of um, exposition of corruption, in terms of um, 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 exposing political corrupt persons and um, carrying out very due diligence investigations on um, corrupt practices. Uh, exactly, that's exactly what we're doing. And um, since we started, it's been wonderful. There's been a lot of discoveries. There's been a lot of monumental um, um, discoveries and investigations, and um, that is yielding results. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's talk about um, some of those discoveries now. Um, recently, you called for the resignation of the Labour Minister, the current Labour Minister, over his um, involvement in a company called Pinnacle. Yeah. Now, there's been a lot of um, claims, allegations, counter-allegations. What is fact? What is fiction? Um, as far as the issue of uh, Pinnacle Constru Contractors Nigerian Limited is concerned, no fiction. Uh, everything there is reality. Um, the company is owned by um, Chief Barrister Emeka Wogu, the Minister of Labour and Productivity. He owns about um, 75 percent of the company because it's a, um, a company that was established with one million naira share capital of one naira each, and um, he owns 750,000 um, capital share. Um, the wife owns 150,000 capital share, and the son own um, 100,000 capital share. And sometime in um, April, especially, I'm uh, sorry, exactly April 7th, um, 2010, the minister resigned um, on the board, from the board of um, the company, though no proper resignation was done because the signature was, not, was wrongly copied. Uh, and um, he left the company, but left his wife and son as directors in that company. And they were directors in that company till the 20th of July this year. So, and um, the House of Representatives that investigated the um, foil subsidy regime um, came out with a report that indicted Pinnacle Contractors Limited um, as stolen taxpayers' money, your money, my money, uh, the poor Pamu and Tapa's money, the poor Shushina's money, my father's money, the farmer's money, Nigerians' money, to the tune of 2.7 billion naira. And um, a repeat of that was when the Aiki Mokode um, led uh, panel, constituted by the Minister of Finance, also brought out the report and indicted the same company again for same amount of money, that is 2.7 billion Nera taxpayers' money without importing one liter of oil into this country or fuel into this country. Um, that's outrageously calamitous. It calls for um, very serious um, investigations. So we went into investigations and discovered that at the time Nigeria was defrauded of this money uh, by Pinnacle Contractors Limited, the wife and son were the only directors in the company. And they were directors in that company on the 20th when he unceremoniously discovered that. Um, um, is in a big mess. He quickly now tried to change the directors of the company on the 20th of July. But the money in question was stolen last year when his son and daughter and wife 
were directors of the company. So it's completely culpable. Okay, so but the most unfortunate thing is that the President of the Republic of Nigeria, um, Dr. Good, uh, Good Luck Ebele, Azikiwe Jonathan, uh, appointed the same man to be the chairman of the white paper on the Ribadu led. Um, uh, Petroleum Revenue Tax Force Committee. So uh, what we are saying is that he cannot be a judge in his own case. He is one of those currently being investigated. Pinnacle Contractors is one of those who, who is one of the oil thieves who actually defrauded the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So if you are asking one of them who is eventually going to be standing trial to be the chairman of um, uh, uh, the Petroleum Revenue uh, Tax Force Committee, then automatically it's, um, it's, 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 it's against the law of natural justice um, because uh, there's conflict of interest. Um, yeah. These are very huge allegations. They are not so allegations so as far as I'm concerned. the evidence of all this? I mean, is this available for the yes, public? Yesterday, to yesterday we addressed a press conference and we gave all available evidence to um, the media. And the Corporate Affairs Commission is a public institution that anyone can actually go into and get these information. Uh, uh, the, the whole process is faulty. We have no other country to call our own other than Nigeria. So the fight against corruption from our end is a battle of no retreat, no surrender. We are not going to like relent our efforts in fighting corruption, not minding us as God. We've received a lot of intimidations, we've a lot of threats, we leave a lot of um, um, manipulations, but even most recently there's been a lot of um, um, false accusation and all that against my person and name. <laughs> okay, but, before, um, before we come but it doesn't to that, matter. Now, you, you also call for the resignation of the finance minister. Yes. Um, over um, subsidy claims and Pinnacle was also one of, one the, of reasons, the, yeah. the reasons that you called for her resignation. Now, obviously these are huge allegations. On what grounds are you calling for her resignation? Yes, um, if you ask me to elucidate lucidly on um, why we are asking the Minister of um, Finance to resign, uh, um, I, I will give you four cardinal reasons. One is that um, recently we discovered that there is a secret account that was opened with JP Morgan in America against the spirit of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended, um, where it stipulated therein that um, all revenues, all revenues, all, all, on the line all there, that all revenues shall be paid into the Consolidated Revenue Account of the Federal Government. So you are not expected to have a secret account. Um, uh, we, a secret account is opened and the Minister of um, Finance, and not just the Minister of Finance, she's been given one illegal power, that is um, um, the Chairman, the Coordinating Minister for the Economy, though that is not known to the law. It's not known to any law of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It's not known to, even the economic team is not known to any law. Mm -hmm. It's not known to the Constitution. It's not, it's, not, it's not the product of any act of the Parliament. Yeah, but that aside, well, a woman who is, who is the Coordinating Minister for the Economy will not tell me that Nigeria is operating an account that she's not aware of. She was called by the Senate. She said, yes, the account is, but she's not aware of the account. And she doesn't know who opened the account. We are saying she must tell us who opened the account. And to me, um, a woman who came with the, with the euphoria from World Bank and all the Harvard, these Harvard that, we expected um, positive concomitant effect and efficiency in terms but of, in terms of accounts. Too, That's too one. too early to, to expect a total turnaround? It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not. I mean, there's a popular Yoruba adage that if you, if you get, if it takes you seven years to get prepared for madness, then for how many years are you going to run mad? I mean, um, people revive economies in six months, in eight months, in one year. Uh, and that's one reason. The second reason is that when she came in, in um, during the Obasan just time, she came because she wanted to help us in getting debt relief. And um, that was actually the whole brouhaha about her trying to come to get debt relief for us, debt forgiveness. But right now, she's taking loan than any minister in the history of the Republic of Nigeria. We are saying that, why are you accumulating loans? Why are you taking loans? And we want to know, at what percentage are you taking this loan? Who are the consultants of this loan? Who are the consultants? Who are those consulting for you on these loans? Are you not enriching yourself somehow by taking these loans? And the savings, she claims she's saving, she's saving. Um, first, it's ridiculous for you to be saving in a country where people are hungry. Okay, then two, if you are saving, want to know where are you saving this money? Which international bank have you taken this money to? At what rates are you saving this money? Nobody has this information. Then thirdly, we are saying again that the Appropriation Act is a law, like every other law in this country. So once it is passed to law and assented to by Mr. President, it becomes a law. So, so any breach of the budget is a breach of law. 
So if the minister came with all the powers, all the um, sophistication, economic prowess, and all that in quotes, and as I speak to you, the capital budget that affects you and I, that affect the masses of this country, that affect the Talakawas in Kano, that affect the Mekunus in the battle, that affect the poor Pamanta and Umuleri, that's the capital budget where you talked about infrastructure, you talked about road construction, you talked about education, you talked about every other thing has been implemented less than 50% and we are in December. Isn't that because she's trying to checkmate corruption? No! no I, just, just recall, I said non-implementation of the budget is a breach of law. Because the budget, the Appropriation Act, is, a, is an act of the parliament. It's a law. And if we have said we are going to do A, B, C, D for the masses, the recurrent aspect of the law of the budget has been, has, has, has been fully implemented. That has to do with the travels of the president with over 3 billion this year. That has to do with um, the feeding and the, um, the, the, the supplies to the kitchen of the president, the uh, incentives, allowances, travels and exchange and all that implemented to the full. But why will it be the most important, which is the capital budget that, have, that is going to give positive um, resultant effect to the masses of this country that has not been implemented up to 50% and we are in December. So the implication is that you are frustrating the de infrastructural development of the masses of this country. That is one reason again why we actually said she will have to go. So we had other very, very other reasons and she's come out to say some, some oil marketers have refunded some money. Yes, sir. We want to know who refunded what out of what? You can't just come and tell Nigerians that some marketers have refunded money. Where's the money? Where did you keep the money? What account did you keep the money? At what interest is the money being kept? And we want to know who among the oil thieves have refunded what out of what? And anyone who has refunded is a direct indictment on that person already because you have admitted guilt by refunding. So we want to know. So these are all the negativities um, we are actually asking her. Okay, let's, let's come to the president now. He has said he's committed to fighting corruption and bringing to book um, subsidy fees. What actions do you expect the president to take now, considering these, these allegations and these claims that you have made? What would he do to make Nigerians believe that he's truly dedicated in fighting? Anyway, I will start outrightly by saying that the president is paying lip service to the fight against corruption. The president is not sincere about fighting corruption. This country, Nigeria, is not only sick, but equally suffers from what I call a dreadful continental abnormality. The president has come out to say he's fighting corruption, but I want to say no government in the Federal Republic of Nigeria have romanced corruption, have massaged corruption, have promoted corruption, have fertilized corruption like this government. Actually, for the first time in the history of this country, corruption has graduated in this government from the stealing of billions to trillions. So the government, the president cannot claim that he wants to fight corruption. And my indices, my yardstick, my parameter for saying that is this. The Minister of Petroleum is the chairman of the board of NNPC. NNPC has been indicted by all the committees that have been established by the federal government and even that of the House of Representatives. The PPPRA have been indicted by all the committees set up, even the one set up by the Zania herself. Indicted PPRA and indicted NNPC for corruption. So, if she has, she should pretend over PPPRA is one of her parastatals that she oversights. And she is the chairman of the board of NNPC. As a result of these manipulations and um, discoveries, the president sacked the board of NNPC and left the minister, who is the chairman. The president sacked the management of NNPC and left the minister. And for you to know that it's deliberate corruption by this government, uh, being teleguided by the minister of uh, petroleum, the FCT, as small as it is, the federal capital, as small as it is, is less than the state. It's got a minister of state. During Obasanjo's government, the petroleum ministry have four ministers. We have minister of petroleum oil and gas. We have minister of petroleum, minister of state for petroleum. We even had a special advisor on petroleum, um, Dr. Rilwan Lukman. But today... The Minister of Petroleum is the only one. No Minister of State, no special advisor to the President on Petroleum. No, for what reason? What, 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 don't you think that could be deliberate? And now that, now that NNPC has been indicted, you cannot be a judge in your own case. NNPC has been investigated. She, as the chairman of the board, is still sitting. The Ministry of Petroleum has been investigated. She is still sitting as the Minister of Petroleum. 
she's definitely going to impute on investigation. And we have a public service act that is clear in this country that once you have been indicted in a corruption case, you have to be suspended. And we have, we have, we have, we have history to, to, to buttress that. One, when Professor Fabiano Suji was a Minister of Education during Obasanjo's tenure, immediately was indicted of corruption. He was removed as minister. When Wabara was a senior president indicted of corruption, he was removed for corruption. When the former Minister of Health, Professor Gregg, and the Minister of State, Gabriel Aduku, were indicted during the year that time, they were removed immediately as ministers. So, but now, more than three, four reports have been, have indicted the NPC, have indicted PPPRA, have indicted DPR, have indicted the PDF, PTDF, but the Minister of um, um, Petroleum is still sitting. So this is a demonstration that this government is not sincere about fighting corruption. I will also want to say what has happened to the Ali Burton case? What has happened to the Siemens case? There is no particular corruption case that has been pro successfully prosecuted under the Jonathan administration. What do you have to say to allegations that you are sponsored by oil cabals and opposition parties or the anti-corruption network? That would be, that would be, a, very, that would be a very myopic poros and parochial thing to say because we are fighting the oil marketers they are the ones we are fighting right now we've taken them to court we've written um a petition against them to the efcc and ifcc pinnacle is one of the oil contractors so how can you be can, you, can, can somebody you're trying you're going to war against actually um loan you ammunitions or get you bullets so as far as i'm concerned those are products of misinformation from people of inordinate ambition, capricious manifestation and reactive information. And we don't actually get bamboozled by unnecessary commentaries and rhetorics because you know what? If you fight corruption, corruption must fight back at you. And we are actually ready. Now you were very instrumental in the Occupy Nigeria protests. Um, we're getting to the end of the year and there are rumors or talks of increasing fuel prices, taking away the subsidies for the what do you think this is going to, what effect do you think this is going to have on Nigerians? In anyway, I want to believe that it will continue to be rumors. We, I personally dare Mr. President to increase um, the pump price of petroleum products. I dare him to do that because we have seen that ab initio there is nothing like subsidy. What we actually subsidize is corruption and not oil. And it has been made manifest by all the revelations we are seeing with the oil marketers. So I dare Mr. President to increase the pump price of petroleum products. And if he does that, we will prove to him that democracy is government of the people by the people and for the people, and not government of the greedy by the greedy and for the greedy. If the president dare to increase the pump price of petroleum products, we are going to give him the Egyptian treatment. We are really going to give him the Egyptian, the the Egyptian treatment. And I want to tell him that we will make this country ungovernable without the confines of law. Okay, let's look at government spending. Now, recently there's been outcry over the approval of um, a new banquet hall um, in the presidential villa, which will cost the taxpayers about 2.2 billion naira. Now, looking at the decayed state of our infrastructure, this seems, there seems to be an imbalance. I mean, what would your network have to say about, about things like this? First, we'll start by saying that that's a very satanic and wicked presentation from... Um, the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and precisely President Goodluck Jonathan. I've never seen anywhere in the world where a 150 capacity hall is going to cost 2.2 billion naira to build. In the first instance, what is the need for the hall? As I speak to you right now, we have a banquet hall that is situated within the perimeters of the villa. So why are you building another hall? When the president will still have to go to international conference centers to attend programs, will still have to go to the Nikon um, uh, Transcorp Hilton to attend programs, will still have to go to Shehu Musayal Adwa Center to attend programs. Why do you want to waste taxpayers' money? A government that prioritizes will not be thinking of banquet all at this point in time of our national life. 2.2 billion naira will provide pipe born water for 100 communities will provide pipe bomb water for 100 communities. Government must wake up from their slumber. President Goodluck Jonathan must become born again, must shove away the negativities and satanic manifestations of past leaders. The man actually is making it beginning to feel that he has no legacy intentions. And we've never seen corruption being propagated, packaged and developed like we are seeing it now. We are waiting to see if the, how the National Assembly will actually approve 
the 2013 I budget to come into that now. because, because the truth of the matter is that the truth the truth of the matter is that you cannot have any pronounced celebrated corruption in a country where you have an effective national assembly the national assembly is saddled with three primary objectives and um, these are one the act of lawmaking one two is the act of representation that representing your people and constituencies three is oversight functions over the mdas and if the National Assembly will carry out oversight functions properly, with every sincerity of purpose of heart and commitment, with every zeal and vigor, with due diligence, there will, no one will steal. And my question is this. Who, who, I want to see the public procurement um, um, establishment that will certify $2.2 billion for this building of a 150-seater capacity hall or banquet hall. Is it going to be laced in gold? Is it going to be laced with diamonds? It's, it's crazy. And the same for the feeding of the president this year. 900 million. But um, the Palm State government house, uh, state house is even complaining that it's too small. Is the president going to be having Gucci rice and Louis Vuitton beans? It's, it's crazy. So the National Assembly must actually wake up to our responsibility. If they pass the budget as it is now, we are going to occupy the National Assembly. Where can the common man go to for redress? I mean, a law courts or violent revolution? What I am not a promoter of violent um, revolution. But I believe in the Martin Luther King type of revolution, peaceful revolution, civil disobedience. We will continue to suffer in times of opprobrium, in times of obloquy, in vicissitude and vacillation, in times of um, in, in perilous times, if we don't wake up from our slumber. Change will not happen in our bedrooms or in our living rooms. Change will actually happen on the streets. I expect Nigerians to also indoctrinate and imbibe in themselves this philosophy that in an unjust society, silence is a crime. Nigerians must come out of their cocoon and agitate for change. Every Nigerian must become a change agent. And how do you become a change agent? It's for you within the, your ward to ask your councillors questions. You in the local government must ask your chairman questions, local government chairman questions. In your state, you must ask your governors to account for whatever um, um, is, is, is the share of, or, 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 of the people of the state. And the people of this country must also stand up. There is this phrase of our national anthem that says, May the labor of our heroes past never go in vain. The way for it not to go in vain is for Nigerians to come out and agitate and protest and vehemently resist um, ineptitude and bad governance. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Yeah, the pleasure is always divine. Thank you very much for taking the time too. Unfortunately, that's all we can take on this edition of the show. If you would like to find out more about the Anti-Corruption Network, please visit their website on the link appearing on your TV screen now. Till we come your way next time, take care of yourself. Have a lovely week ahead. Bye-bye.